Hello and welcome. In this tutorial I'll show you how to deploy a Hello World application to Google Cloud Platform, GCP. One of the powerful tools within GCP is the App Engine, which lets you easily manage and configure your applications, automatically scale your apps to meet customer demands, and efficiently implement updates. Let's get started. So first, you need to navigate to cloud.google.com and access the Google Cloud Platform console. If you're using GCP for the first time, you can sign up for a free trial that will give you access to all the features while you get started. Now select the drop-down in the top left-hand corner of the interface and select Create Project. The next step is to provide a new name for the project. You need to enter a unique name because this forms the URL of the app once it's deployed. Once that's done, click Create. It'll take a few seconds for Google to provision your new project. You'll know that this is complete when the name of your project appears in the top left-hand corner drop-down. The project console looks a bit blank at the moment because you don't have any apps running. But once you've created your app, this is where you'll view app usage, health and resources such as CPUs. Next, you need to configure the project and write the Go code for your app. The Google Cloud Shell and Web IDE let us do all that from the browser. Select the Cloud Shell button in the top right hand corner to open the Google Cloud Shell. This shell is running on a VM in Google's cloud and comes pre-configured to connect to your GCP projects. So from here you can deploy new code, start and stop apps and scale your website. All the usual terminal commands are supported here. Select the file icon and launch the web editor. This interface works just like a desktop IDE but the integration with Google Cloud Platform is all there for you. You can create and edit files and folders just as though they were on the computer in front of you. Now you need to create a new folder to keep track of your Go application code. Select File, New Folder and give it a name. For the basic Go app you need two files. Right click the folder that you've just created and select New, File. This first one will hold all the Go code. Name it main.go. Next, create a file called app.yaml to hold the configuration stuff. Select main.go and let's start writing the code for the app. You need to import some libraries to handle basic web requests. In Go this is done with the import command. The three libraries you need are FNT, log and HTTP. The main function will run when your app is deployed. We're going to use the HTTP method handle func to enable your app to process web requests. In this example you want to respond to all requests in the same way. The slash here means that you want the app to listen to all requests to your URL. The handle callback specifies what code should run when someone tries to load any page from your website. Next, you can integrate app health monitoring, which is on this URL by default. Again, the health check handler callback tells Go what to do when a request comes in on this endpoint. This log step just makes the app easier to use locally. The Fatal here has the same capabilities as Print and in addition gives control of the shell back to the user once the app has started. Now you need to write those two functions, Handle and Health Check Handler, that you pass as callbacks to your HTTP listeners. First let's look at the Handle function. This function takes two parameters. The first is a response writer so the app can communicate directly with the client browser. The second is the HTTP request object. This tells you what data the user who tried to access your page is requesting from the server. You need to check that the URL being requested matches the slash you were looking for earlier. This information is on the request URL path object. If the request contains something that your app wasn't expecting, you just exit and send the not found page back to the user.
If the user requested a valid page, you want to send Hello World back, which you can do using FMT. Now for the health check handler. This takes the same two parameters as the handle function did, a response writer and the request itself. This function's even simpler. You just want to print the app status, which in this case is OK, to let GCP know that your app is healthy and running as you expected. And that's it for the Go code. The IDE will save automatically, but there's no harm in selecting file and save yourself. Now open the app.yaml file you created earlier to write the app configuration. You need to specify your runtime, in this case Go, the API level, I'm using version 1, and tell the project that you want to run in a VM. Save this, and you're done with the code. Go back to the Google Cloud shell in the other tab and check that your changes are there. Type ls and hit enter to see the files and folders. cd into the folder that you just created to hold your Go code and run cat main.go. You should see all the Go code that you just wrote appear in the shell. Next, you need to use the shell to deploy the app in App Engine. The command gcloud app deploy will push the code that you just wrote to the cloud instance. Check the deploying to URL matches the project name that you created earlier. If you're happy with that, press yes and hit enter. This can take a few minutes the first time you run it as it's deploying a totally new chunk of code to your project. Subsequent deployments will be much faster. The Cloud SDK is packaging your application and starting a virtual server in the Google Cloud environment to which to deploy your code. Once it's finished, you'll be able to access this VM and see your website from the URL that it just asked you to confirm. OK, once that's finished, copy the address for your project and paste it into a new browser tab. There you go, your first application written in Go, deployed to GCP with App Engine. If you refresh the console now, you can see that your application has all the monitoring information that you might expect, such as number of CPUs being used and API requests. Thank you very much for watching.